Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Avid Shows 3D. This is the Dungeons and Dragons version. So I recently got involved with a group playing Dungeons and Dragons and with any kind of group where you're playing Dungeons and Dragons you have to have dice. Not just a few dice. I'm talking a lot of dice. So I got two sets of dice and decided I was going to print my own dice holder. Now this can be found on Thingiverse and then we'll leave a um, description of it. So this is using just um, some metallic filled copper filament that I include in the description and using my um, Prusa Mark III I took it all the way up on the lid to the very top and then the last part I stopped and changed color with uh, just a red. So you see you get a nice little uh, filling here. This was not done in filament, different color filament. I actually painted this on with gold. But I guess I could have used some of this filament, nice and shiny, to fill in for this. Okay, so I printed my first one, and this is the standard size it comes with right here. And it worked well, but as you can see, it wouldn't hold all of my dice. Too much. So I said, I need it taller. I need it a lot taller. I need it like four inches instead of the standard that I have, which is, let's find out. This one is about three inches. This one is six inches. So I want it twice as tall. Now, when you're making it twice as big, 200%, right? Not only does it make this part bigger, but the threads become wider apart as well. So if you're going to use 200%, uh, you can't use the standard lid on that. It's not going to fit. So I had to take the lid and make the lid 200% as well to make sure it fits. Now, I learned something from a 3D printing nerd. That's Joel. I'm saying if you have something that screws into something else, it's a good idea to make it 1% to 2% larger than what you're screwing onto. So this is 102% wider and 200% taller. And then it just goes right on like this. So remember that because this was not bigger, this lid, even now, it's kind of tight. So I'll make it 1% to 2% bigger around in order to make it fit. So this is great. And this is holding all of my dice, which is good. And it makes a great sound when it goes in. But, like any guy playing D&D, &D, I want better dice. So I ordered some... Metallic dice on Dungeons and, or on Amazon. Let me zoom in here a little bit. There we go. It's DND and D. You can find it on Amazon. And they have all kinds of metal dice. See these dice? They're all metal. Really great. Let's see if I can get one out here. Oh, no. I bought, oh, and I bought two of them instead of one of them. So these dice. Really great, nice and heavy, good half to them. But I didn't want them rolling around loose in here, rubbing against each other. I'd love to be able to keep them in the original foam that comes packaged in. So I couldn't use something like that. So like any maker, I decided to take something and create it for my purpose. And I got this. All right, so this is... Um, also on Thingiverse, it's like a box that they're using for Dungeons and Dragons. You can keep uh, notes in here, you can keep dice in here, um, you can keep small figurines in here. But once again, I don't want them banging around as I transport them around. I want to be able to fit one of these, the cutouts, in here. Now the original size for this was much smaller than my cutout. 
So now I have to make it bigger. Now, if you haven't invested in a set of good digital calipers, definitely recommend you do. I was able to measure this, which is 99, and I got the width, which is about 65. And then I started tinkering this together. Now, I tried about two or three times. If you're trying to fit something into something else, a good idea is to start the print where you think it should be, wait till it gets about here, stop the print, because you only got about half an hour invested in it, and then place this on top to see if it's going to fit. My first two times did not fit. Third time's a charm. So I was able to take this, and it's kind of tight, but it still fits in like this. There we go. And I was able to take all my dice and fit them in here, now, I want to be able to fit all my dice in here, so I had to make it much taller as well. But as you can see, I could fit my dice in here very easily. And then the lid of this comes a little bit of foam, so I was able to put foam in between them. In fact, two layers, so they rub against each other. And then I was able to take this one. There we go. And... Good. Um, put it on top of here. Cool. Now, the cool thing about this, as you can see, it fits really well. A little space on top to put another piece of foam on top. And then you have a lid that goes on the top. Now, the lid, of course, is going to have to be hinged. It goes like this. And, of course, I can hinge it with filaments. I don't know if you've ever tried this before, but if you take a strand of filament and feed it through like this, there we go. Then all I have to do is take a soldering iron, I've cut this, flatten the soldering iron against the plastic, and uh, it will fit perfectly and it won't come out. So this is now hinged. Now, this is a dragon box. So this is half the dragon. Beautiful purple. I'll leave the color purple here in the description because it is a deep midnight purple. But it has another side to it. Now take a look at this. Isn't that great? Now the dragon is printed in the gold color PLA. Now the gold color PLA comes from Polyalchemy Elixir. It's the only polyalkylene I've ever purchased because it's very expensive. This is part of their silk. It's called Gold Rush. It's part of their Elixir brand. And this is amazing. I only bring it out for special prints where I'm just doing some highlights and not the whole thing. But look how that gold sets against the royal purple like that. Really happy with that. So, we had that going, but... I wanted to do something a little bit more special than that. Um, pull this out. I want to make sure the lid stayed closed. Now to make sure the lid stayed closed, I have a couple of rare earth magnets lying around from another project. So what I did was I glued a magnet on the bottom here so that the magnet will pull against the, um, the PLA to a metal plate that I uh, glued to here. Now this is all just super glue. So now, as you can see, it stays together. Very cool. So now I, all I have to do is I haven't um, taken the same color PLA to make the hinges yet because I want to show you disassembled. But I'm really happy with the results. This was printed with a CR10. I have a CR10 with a 0.4 millimeter um, uh, nozzle, nothing special. 20% infill on this, and I just used um, like a 0.2 layer height. Nothing special about this at all. If you have a CR10 dialed in, there's no stringing. Uh, the layers look amazing. Now the only thing I did do was I did um, 10 tops because I've done tops before where it would leave holes in it. So I've done 10 tops to give it that really great finish on top. 
and even the sides look amazing with this. So this is my D&D &D adventure. I went ahead and printed a box for all my dice and of course a bottle. I'm just going to call it a dice bottle for all my others. Hope you enjoyed uh, this episode of Episodes 3D and maybe you'll learn something. As always, subscribe below. We always enjoy your comments and any suggestions you might have. And you guys have a great day.